The Silk Road was a network of ancient trade routes, formally established during the Han Dynasty of China in 130 BC that linked regions of the ancient world in trade between 130 BC 1453 AD. The Silk Road was not a single route from east to west. My name is Francisca and welcome to the Myths and Curiosities channel. Already leave your like, subscribe to the channel and activate the bell so you don't miss any notifications. In the 19th century, a German archaeologist named Ferdinand von Richthofen established the name of one of the most famous trade and religious routes of all time, the so-called Silk Road. Before that name was chosen, this route, with more than 7,000 kilometers, had already been used for more than 10,000 years by adventurers, pilgrims, merchants, clerics, monarchs and soldiers who cut this extensive set of road on foot or on the back of animals, from the Syrian part of the Mediterranean Sea, to the Chinese territories of Xiong. From west to east these goods included horses, saddles and riding equipment, fruits, the vine and the grapes, dogs and other exotic and domestic animals, animal fur and fur, glass, wool blankets, rugs, carpets, textiles such as curtains, gold and silver, camels, slaves, weapons and armor. From east to west the goods included silk, tea, dyes, precious stones, china, plates, bowls, cups, vases, porcelain, spices such as cinnamon and ginger, bronze and gold artifacts, medication, perfumes, ivory, rice, roll, gunpowder. The net was used regularly from 130 BC when the Han Dynasty, 202 BC 220 AD, officially opened trade with the West, until 1453 AD when the Ottoman Empire boycotted trade with the West and closed the routes. By this time, Europeans were already used to goods from the East, and when the Silk Road closed, traders had to find new trade routes to meet the demand for these goods. The closing of the Silk Road ushered in the Age of Discovery, also known as the Age of Exploration, 1453 to 1660 AD, which would be defined by European explorers going to sea and charting new sea routes to replace land trade. The Age of Discovery would impact cultures around the world as European ships claimed some lands in the name of their god and country and influenced others by introducing Western culture and religion and at the same time these other nations influenced cultural traditions European. The Silk Road, from its opening to its closing, had such an impact on the development of world civilization that it is difficult to imagine the modern world without it. The history of the Silk Road predates the Han Dynasty in practice, however, as the Persian Royal Road, which would later serve as one of the main arteries of the Silk Road, was established during the Achaemenid Empire c. 550-330 BC. The Persian Royal Road ran from Susa in northern Persia, modern-day Iran, to the Mediterranean Sea in Asia Minor, modern-day Turkey, and featured post offices along the route with fresh horses for envoys to quickly deliver messages across the empire. Herodotus, writing of the speed and efficiency of Persian messengers, stated that There is nothing in the world that travels faster than these Persian messengers. Neither snow, nor rain, nor heat, nor the darkness of night prevent these messengers from completing their assigned stages with maximum speed. These lines, centuries later, would form the creed of the United States Post Office. The Persians maintained the royal road carefully and, over time, expanded it to smaller secondary roads. These paths eventually crossed the Indian subcontinent, Mesopotamia, and Egypt. After Alexander the Great conquered the Persians, he established the city, later the Greek Kingdom, of Alexandria Esgate in 339 BC in the Fergana Valley of Neb, modern Tajikistan. Leaving his wounded veterans in the city behind, Alexander moved on. Over time, these Macedonian warriors intermarried with the indigenous population creating the Greco-Bactrian culture that flourished under the Seleucid Empire after Alexander's death. Under the Greco-Bactrian King Euthydemus I, are 260 to 195 BC, the Greco-Bactrians extended their possessions. According to the Greek historian Strabo, 63 to 24 BC, the Greeks extended their empire as far as Ceres. Beings was the name by which the Greeks and Romans knew China, meaning the land from which silk came in East Asia. 
It is thought, then, that the first contact between China and the West took place around the year 200 BC. China's Han Dynasty was regularly besieged by the nomadic Xiongnu tribes on its northern and western borders. In 138 BC, Emperor Wu sent his emissary Zhang Qian West to negotiate with the Yueji people for help in defeating the Xiongnu. Zhang Qian's expedition brought him into contact with many different cultures and civilizations. In Central Asia, and among them those he designated the Daiyuan, the Great Ionians, who were the Greco-Bactrian descendants of the army of Alexander the Great. The Daiyuan had powerful horses, Zhang Qian reported to Wu, and these could be used effectively against the Xiongnu marauders. The aftermath of Zhang Qian's journey was not just greater contact between China and the West, but an organized and efficient program of breeding horses across the country to equip a cavalry. The horse has long been known in China and has been used in warfare for cavalry and chariots since the Shang Dynasty, 1600 to 1046 BC, but the Chinese admired the Western horse for its size and speed. With the Daiyuan's Western horse, the Han Dynasty defeated the Xiongnu. This success inspired Emperor Wu to speculate on what else could be gained for trade with the West and the Silk Road was opened in 130 BC. Between 171 to 138 BC, Mithridates I of Parthia campaigned to expand and consolidate his kingdom in Mesopotamia. The Seleucid king Antiochus VII Sidetes, are 138 to 129 BC, opposed this expansion and, also desiring revenge for the death of his brother Demetrius, waged war against the Parthian forces of Phraates II, Mithridates' successor. With Antiochus' defeat, Mesopotamia came under Parthian rule, and with it came control of the Silk Road. The Parthians then became the central intermediaries between China and the West. The Silk Road stretched from China through India, Asia Minor, to Mesopotamia, Egypt, mainland Africa, Greece, Rome and Great Britain. The northern region of Mesopotamia, present-day Iran, became China's closest trading partner as part of the Parthian Empire, initiating important cultural exchanges. Paper, invented by the Chinese during the Han Dynasty, and gunpowder, also a Chinese invention, had a much greater impact on culture than silk. The rich spices of the East also contributed more than the fashion that emerged from the silk industry. Even so, by the time of the Roman Emperor Augustus, our 27 BC 1480, trade between China and the West was firmly established and silk was the most sought after commodity in Egypt, Greece, and especially Rome. Before becoming Emperor Augustus, Octavian Caesar took advantage of the controversial topic of silk clothing to denounce his adversaries Mark Antony, L. 83 to 30 BC, and Cleopatra 7, L. 69 to 30 BC, as immoral. As both preferred Chinese silk, which was increasingly associated with licentiousness, Octavian exploited the bond to belittle his enemies. Octavian would triumph over Antony and Cleopatra, he could do nothing, however, to reduce silk's popularity. The Romans considered silk a vegetable product combed from trees and valued it for its weight in gold. Much of this silk reached the island of Kos, where it was woven into dresses for the ladies of Rome and other cities. In AD 91, the relatively poor state of Messenia had to ban its women from wearing sheer silk dresses at religious initiations. 329. By the time of Seneca the Younger, L. for BC AD 65, conservative Romans were more ardent than Augustus in condemning Chinese silk as a moral dress for women and a feminine dress for men. These criticisms did nothing to stop the silk trade with Rome, however, the island of Kos became rich and luxurious through the manufacture of silk clothing. Italy enjoyed an unfavorable balance of trade, happily, buying, more than it sold, but still exported rich goods to China such as carpets, jewels, amber, metals, dyes, drugs, and glass, 328 to 329, until the time of Emperor Marcus Aurelius, R.161-180 AD, silk was the most valued commodity in Rome. Even after Aurelius, silk remained popular, albeit increasingly expensive, until the fall of the Roman Empire in 476 CE. Rome outlived its eastern half, which came to be known as the Byzantine Empire and which continued the Roman passion for silk. Around AD 60, the West realized that silk was not grown on the trees of China, but was actually spun by silkworms. The Chinese had very purposefully kept the origin of silk a secret, and once discovered, they carefully guarded their silkworms and their silk harvesting process. 
the Byzantine Emperor Justinian, are 527 to 565 c, tired of paying the exorbitant prices the Chinese demanded for silk, sent two emissaries, disguised as monks, to China to steal silkworms and smuggle them back to China. The West. The plan was successful and started the Byzantine silk industry. When the Byzantine Empire fell to the Turks in 1453 c, the Ottoman Empire closed the old Silk Road routes and severed all ties with the West. The Silk Road's greatest value was the exchange of culture. Art, religion, philosophy, technology, language, science, architecture India and all other elements of civilization were traded along these routes, laden with the commercial goods that merchants traded from country to country. Along this network, disease also traveled, as evidenced in the spread of the bubonic plague of 542 c, which is believed to have reached Constantinople via the Silk Road and which decimated the Byzantine Empire. The closing of the Silk Road forced traders to go to sea to carry on their trade, thus starting the Age of Discovery, which led to worldwide interaction and the beginning of a global community. In its time, the Silk Road served to broaden people's understanding of the world in which they lived, its closure would propel Europeans across the ocean to explore, and eventually conquer, the so-called New World of the Americas initiating the so-called Columbian Exchange whereby goods and values were passed between those of the Old World and those of the New, universally to the detriment of the indigenous peoples of the New World. In this way, it can be said that the Silk Road laid the foundations for the development of the modern world. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Comment below what you want to watch on the channel, already take the opportunity to subscribe to the channel and leave your like. Thank you and until the next video.